The 2007-08 season was a challenge for Mick McCarthy's Wolves squad, still without premiership money, but after miracles worked in reaching the playoffs at the very first attempt. The arrival of new owner Steve Morgan and a £30 million injection of cash for the club also raised justifiable expectations for success. Sir Jack Hayward retired to the deserved role of life president to enjoy the new era from the stands. McCarthy's opening fixture was against newly relegated promotion hopefuls Watford at home. Potter and Olifignana. Two minutes to be Olivia added on to this first half. Two minutes, time allowed. Two minutes. Match of dates sponsored by Chelsea. Ward for Kia. Elliott, and here is Olifignana. Finish. A cracking build up. Look at the position he takes up. Nobody picks him up. Lovely first touch. Lovely way to pass. And that is a tr tremendous finish after his previous shot went right over the bar. Lovely ball. Kept his head. Saw the keeper come out. Just lifted it over. And he spent a lot of money on this football club, or will do in the future, Steve Morgan. There's the first little bit of payback. Back enough. Waited for it rather than Danny Shittu. Wolves didn't. And had a free kick by Watford. Williamson wanted to take it quickly. But, uh, understandably, they didn't want to allow that Wolves and Potter with the block. So it will be a more measured approach. Also in the next game, it looks like it will be Stewart. It's hit with real power. Oh, it's a beauty! Jordan Stewart with an opening day cracker for Watford. And he should have salvaged the point. Strikes it well. And there is a deflection there. Beats Hennessy. It just loops it up over. This is unlucky. That's going wide. That is going wide. It's took the deflection. And it's just looped over Hennessy. Nervous touch up by Edwards. And this good forward for Cabot. It's cover for Watford, and that's a wild challenge, and it's a penalty. Goodness me, Neil Collins with the challenge, which has given Watford a real chance to steal the points here in the dying seconds. Well, how about this? Cabot as well. That's a shocking challenge. Three points at stake with what is essentially the last kick of the game. It's King. It's in. It's a perfect penalty, and it's a perfect opening to the season for Watford. They've turned it around at Wolves. A lot of pressure. Look at that, right in the roof of the net. And he's over the moon. Ball out wide to Stephen Ward. It's a teasing cross, a flick on by Keogh and Eastwood! <laughs> Freddie Eastwood has his first goal for Wolves and opens the scoring straight after half-time. A teasing cross from Ward. Beautiful flick on. And look at that finish. Isn't he happy? He has every right to be. He's beginning 
those crosses in again. It's headed out straight to Craddock. Oh, that's unstoppable. Jody Craddock with one of the best strikes you will ever see. It dropped nicely for him, but even so, what an exquisite finish. We've got many of those in a career. Jody Craddock knows it's a special moment. He's put Walsall 2 0 ahead against the second division side. And they are just looking for something to get themselves back into this game. Wolves may be disappointed they haven't put the game out of their reach by now. So they have plenty of opportunities. They can get the cross in. Maybe Wolves stretch to the back here. Next! Bradford have one back. And the travelling faithful, who come in their hundreds here, have a goal to celebrate. There's lovely skills out on the right here, but next, he sort of toe pokes at it. But it's 2 1. Facing another of the pre-season's bigger clubs, Sheffield Wednesday, the journey to Hillsborough was always going to be a game to set up the season for Wolves. Possibilities here, Kitely to Keo. Saved by Grant, but it's going to be followed up. And Freddie Eastwood has done it again. The goal in midweek in the Carling Cup. A goal now on his league debut within 14 minutes. Keo's effort blocked by the goalkeeper, but Eastwood made no mistake. Oh, it's a dangerous one. Problems here, was that handball? Well, it doesn't matter, because Wade Small has turned it in and Sheffield Wednesday a level. Right on the stroke of half-time. Here. Eastwood, he's done well. Oh, it's a lovely ball. It's a chance now for Kitely. And in. Great start to the second half. And Eastwood involved yet again. It's Kitely who takes the goal scoring glory this time. Sold Tommy Spur a little. And Kitely through the goalkeeper. Ball, the flick on by Wade Small, it's teed up for him again, and it might squeeze in. <laughs> well, Hennessy has just kept it out. It's Henry's ball, and this is Bothroyd. It's a chance, he's away from Wood, and he sealed the victory. Right at the end, the breathing space Wolves needed. Jay Bothroyd kept his composure and seals the win. Has got away from the Wolves defence, but it was coming, and Blackpool have the lead. 51 minutes gone, and Wolves have paid for their profligacy in the first half. And see it's a really, really long kick. Keo's uh, come a long way. So's Eastwood, and he's done it. Freddie Eastwood has three and three for Wolves. And the equaliser finally comes. Great long kick from Hennessy, but look at the finish from Eastwood. There's a pace for the future. Oh, well, the elusive second goal. But that's a neat ball out. Kite is away. He's got Keo and Eastwood is joining them. Here is Keo. Eastwood. He's got a second and Wolves have the lead. It seems like an age in coming. But it was always going to be Keo or Kitely who set him up. Kite has done well here. Keo. 
strikes it well. Goalkeeper can't keep it up. Eastwood makes it 2 1. I come here um, after we got the pre season at the weight. Um, I started scoring, and that's obviously what I wanted to do from leaving South End scoring. I wanted to come here and score, and I was doing that. Henry was dwelling on that rather than this is twists. It's a chance for Morecambe. Oh, what's the decision here? It's a penalty. Well, Stack may protest, but he's going to go into the book and Morecambe have a spot kick. Carl Baker scores. And Morecambe in front at Molyneux. Keo. Oh, it's a lovely bit of link up. Keo. Oh, that's a penalty. Whistle in mouth straight away, and it's Baker who's conceded it. The man who scored from the spot for Morecambe. And Keo has dusted himself down and will take the responsibility. And we'll level it up, and we're now seven minutes away from extra time. That's a good searching ball here for Blinkhorn. He's found Newby, oh, and Stack! A moment to forget for the goalkeeper. A goal to remember for John Newby. That's a dangerous ball there, and a chance. And Gary Thompson has sealed the sensation of this Carling Cup round. The expectancy when I got the job nearly two years ago was we were going to get relegated. You were at the press conference. I think you maybe asked me the question. Uh, that is what people said to me. And I thought that was ridiculous and proved that to be the case by getting in the playoffs. Didn't have to make a rod for my own back there, didn't I? And everybody else. Despite the embarrassment of a cup exit at the hands of Minnow's Morecambe FC, Mick McCarthy could be happy with the six out of nine point haul from the first championship month and the return to the heady playoff position at the end of last season. Could the start be maintained? Ball for Ward. And will it open up for Ward here? And well awry of the target in the end. Stoke hoping to force the issue. And like to get the ball into the box early. This is Fuller. He works shooting space. Off the head of Breen in the end. Walks in the boot to get on with it here. This is Kitely. Wants an opportunity here. Oh, and Elliot will follow it up. And Wolves take the lead. Kenny couldn't hang on to it. And Elliot was first to the rebound. Hesitation and BT will score. His bravery earns its reward. There's another one right down the throat, and Breen is in trouble here with BT. Now the wrestling match breaks out. It's stuck in by Stead, but the referee has given the penalty. Beating with a chance to complete the turnaround. BT scores, they come from behind and they lead with seven minutes to go. And straight down the middle, instead is clear. It's a chance for him to seal it and does. Kitely on the left foot, good cross, and Ward is up! 
Bit of line by Ashby. The whole defender. The, um, way over the top there. Real opportunity for Wolves. Ward got up well there. Not the tallest of players. Fabulous cross from Kitely. And look at this jump from Ward. And Ashby just reaches out and gets it with his right leg. Collins has uh, got off this one, oh, and he's brought Garcia down, and Hull have a penalty. Garcia was just too quick for Collins here. No question about it. And it's Windus to give Hull an unexpected lead. Molina, which he does. Wolves paying for the early misses. Sneaky <laughs> picked up Foley, he's done really well here. And Kevin Foley, the defender, one of the new boys, has given Wolves the lead with a spectacular goal. Keeper, really, no chance there. Foley just trapped it with his chest, trapped it with his thigh, kept on going, and puts Wolves in the lead. What a great finish! Determination and a striker's finish there. Keeper had no chance. A great ball back to Keo, Andy Keo. He's in space here. Keo may may not need anybody. He doesn't. Just a little assist off the post, and Andy Keo has a second for Wolves. This is more like Wolves from last season. It's two in 12 minutes for Mick McCarthy's men, and Andy Keo. You can see. He's the one who brought the ball out of defence, just a quick one-two. In a little bit of space, just two Norwich defenders back, he thinks. And at this, and he does. What an exquisite strike, two fabulous goals from Wolves, deserved leaders. And Andy Keogh thrilled with that, as well he might be. Oh, that's a terrible, terrible tackle from Jason Shackle. I don't think we'll be seeing much more of him. Steve Bennett, usually refereeing at Premier League level. That really was a shocking tackle. Absolutely shocking. And he can't complain. He may have a few words. But Norwich are down to ten men. Oh, that's another terrible tackle, this time by Bellian. Norwich could find themselves down to nine men. Steve Bennett, well, after the kicking away, there's no doubt Huckabee can say what he likes, but he's not going to save his teammate from an early bath. There's two in there now. There's the red. The Wolves have two goals, and Norwich have two men set off. I just wish I scored a few more of them, you know. Um, you know, I think it was just instinct. It came, the ball came to me edge of the box, and I managed to weave through a couple of players, and I just hit it as hard as I could, and thankfully it stayed low and uh, into the corner. But you know, it's something I look to improve on. And it is in the middle, headed away by Sawyer. Buzaki, oh, and Pinjani was onto him quickly. Now Kitely, looking for Keo, oh, mostly trying to get the ball away. Keo again, flipped into the middle this time, and it's in there. Stephen Elliott has got the goal that you felt was coming. Well, Argyle really with only themselves to blame. They just didn't get the ball away. And the defence was stretched. And Stephen Elliott timing his run to perfection. Solid challenge from Sawyer. Well, Moses. Long ball up towards Fallon. 
Got up well for it. Chadwick trying to get in on it. Still going, Nick Chadwick. One all. And the substitution does the trick. Well, they've only been on the field a couple of minutes, but Rory Fallon and Nick Chadwick combining to put Argyle level. September was a mixed month for Wolves, but four out of the last six points at least concluded it in the right fashion. A decent winning run was required for October. Wolves started it with a trip to the Walkers Stadium, where they finished last season so brilliantly. The old boot down field. Stephen Elliott. Got it to Henry. Good stop from the keeper. Now try and put it back in again. That was a fabulous save. Ray puts it in again. Get it away. Touches under the left foot. Great save from Hennessy. He had to get down quickly. Myself, Jez and Steve have a good working relationship. We sit down and discuss all aspects of, of the club. Uh, certainly from the football side of it, because that's what I'm involved in. Uh, and they, you know, they have their input. We sit down and make decisions. Uh, well, they back my decisions, so it's which is great, you know. But we sit down and discuss it collectively. So Steve's got more of a, an input into it than Sir Jack ever did. And ultimately, it will be good for the club because he's driving it and he's very ambitious for the club. Uh, but I think the start of this is I think we're all a bit wrapped up in the fact that Steve had took over. We bought a few players, and suddenly we're just going to be. Hurrah, Wolves are getting up and I think a bit naively we all get wrapped up in it and it's not been uh, just as easy as perhaps some people thought it was going to be. Doyle shot. Michael Doyle must have thought he'd given Coventry the lead. There he is out there somewhere. It's a neat cross from Kylie and Collins is in! The death, Neil Collins of all people. Looks to have given Wolves all three points. Well, he began last month giving a penalty away that uh, led to defeat against Hull. And now he may just have come up with the winner in the nick of time. It was Kindly's corner. One-two off the defender. Watch this cross, it's a great cross. But look at this header from Collins. No one was going to stop that. I think the manager knows my best position is centre back, and I think it just adds more strings to your bow, if anything else. So um, I certainly think it's in this day and age it's important that you can play kind of different positions, and um, I'm quite pleased to play wherever as long as I'm playing. And not just as a defender, but you made your mark once or twice with uh, goals and, and important goals, yeah. so late late goals. We all scored at Molyneux, which is which is obviously pleasing, you know, in front of the home crowd and the fact that they've all been winners as well is even even more pleasing. So no, it's been it's been good to add to, add to that side of my game. The stage of the game you just you thought it's going to be a point and then to kinda of sneak a goal. Um, no, it's it's great and it's a great feeling and something that can't really be described. So I look back at those moments quite fondly. Keo has been pushed wide but a clever little ball in here to Henry. Bothroyd! A real poacher's goal. And Jay Bothroyd, a player who couldn't stop scoring last season, been struggling this year. Discovering his touch. Good play from Keo. Seen Henry make the little run. Look at this. Flick from Bothroyd, very subtle, and it means Wolves have the lead against Charlton. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. To Henry, what an audacious effort. Couldn't really keep it down, but Carl Henry's been everywhere today. What a game he's had. Very well. Here's Barney. Charlton. 
That's to aim at. He's got the shot in. And Hennessy, well, what a season he's having. Bothroyd. Beautiful little fashion chip through to Henry. And these two are like twins. Bothroyd returning the favour. Henry made the goal for him earlier. Look at this exquisite control here. Just saying to the defender, come at me, come at me, come at me. And then finds Henry with that lovely pass. And look at that finish. Wolves have two. Here. Bothroyd will work his way through. A better a purse. This is Keo and Kitely. It's a simple job, and Wolves have the lead on 13 minutes. It's Tony Capaldi. A promising burst from the full back. Up goes Hasselbank. Ledley. Oh, and that looks like a foul, it'll be a penalty. And no complaints. So it'll be Robbie Fowler against Wayne Hennessy. Oh, so simple, so nonchalant. And Cardiff City a level. This is Bothroy. The challenge came in from McNaughton, and this is Parry. Got Hasselbank lurking. He's got a bit to do here to try and get beyond Collins. Fowler, Hasselbank! Two goals in five minutes, and Cardiff City have turned it around. Scored by Foley. Well, this is Kitely. Can he get the better of Lovens? He can, and scores! Two two at Ninian Park. Finally, second of the match. And the heads go off. It was Craddock. He scored. And Wolves lead again. What a roller coaster ride of a match this has been. Janet up to rightly now tries to slip it through Vilnis all possibility here and that's a penalty surely Kitely brought down by Alexander who now has to face Freddie Eastwood and Alexander saves it it was weakly hit in the end It's a good ball for Garvin. Lee making a move. It's Alan Lee for Ipswich. Real chance, which he takes. Ipswich lead three minutes before half time. Into Cunyago. Wrestle his way through Cunyago. Brilliantly taken by the Spaniard. And he has doubled Ipswich's money. And Wolves' unbeaten run is in real danger of coming to a close here. Pablo Cunyago on the mark. Harding making the move. This is Haynes. Oh, he's done brilliantly there, Danny Haynes. That's three. And three points for Ipswich. October 2007 saw just one Wolves defeat from the five matches in the final game of the month. And just like October 2006 the previous season, McCarthy's Wanderers had got right back on the playoff track as far as promotion was concerned and up into fifth place, a seven-place climb from the end of September. Quickly. 
madness with these corners. A good jump here, and the keeper's dropped it. Cleared out as far as Bothroyd. Well, Jay Bothroyd, for a change, was on the outside of the area where the ball came out to him. And he's hit it with a left foot, and it's gone through a crowd of players at the back of the net. See, they've got a deflection. Don't think so. Wolves ahead. It's that man, Bothroyd, again. Two here. It's nothing goes free kick. And Fontaine, Liam Fontaine, got away from the Wolves defence. And Mick McCarthy will be furious. Wolves held the lead just for a few minutes. Those curling free kick Wolves caught completely square at the back. They won't be pleased when they see that one again. Bristol City level. And it's another kindly corner. Wolves push everybody up. Looking for a winner that is no less than they deserve. Collins. Fabulous save. Adriano Basso, the Bristol City keeper. He's been keeping Wolves at bay all day and great header from Collins. He must have thought he'd got the winner. A fabulous save. I think Gary Johnson's done a remarkable job. And that, you know, even that is a... I look back at when we played them here for 35 minutes and if we'd have been four up, they wouldn't have argued. And he ended up drawing one all. He probably was hanging on at the end. Um, you know, it's, they've, they've done remarkably well and over, well, possibly, well, overachieved, I think. Done better than anybody would expect. Shoved on the Keo. Stephen Ward. The drive comes in from Oliver Njana. It's Bothroyd giving chase. And he's got in behind here, Bothroyd! Good save by Davis. And a chance here for Henry. The centre, Collins! Neil Collins has torched another one! And what a great delivery from Kitely. He's setting him up week in, week out. Collins. Yeah, we've got something behind that. Gibson to hit it, just wide, Dean Kiley at full stretch there. And Gibson going very close indeed to giving Wolves the lead here at the Hawthorns. Just five minutes remaining here, will we get a winner? Oh, it looked like a push, and he's given the penalty. Neil Collins penalised for bringing down Craig Beatty in the opinion of Chris Foy. And Wayne Hennessy now charged with stopping. West Brom taking the lead with five minutes to go. It's Zoltan Gira against Hennessy. Saved it. Wonderful save from Wayne Hennessy. Keeps the scoreline at nil-nil here at the Hawthorns. Finds the back of the net. And Wolves go in front on the half hour. Gibson did well. Freddie Eastwood got up there, but Elliot was on hand to get the rebound home. It was the lead. Undefeated in five games in November, the month saw Wolves consolidate their playoff position, ending the month in fourth place. 
something that manager Mick McCarthy could feel very happy about with the Christmas period approaching. Chest down for Ward. Here's Henry. Space opening up for him, Carl Henry. What a wonderful goal! And Carl Henry, who hasn't scored since the middle of October, suddenly saw the waters opening up before him. Ole, 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 biscuit barrel. Up he goes. There's a clean hit, just one bounce. Keep it, keep it out. Good passing football. Try to uh, play it simple and trying to play it quick and try to get forward. Uh, you know, there's some suggestion early on that we just bash it up to the front, and I find that unbelievable. But uh, I think if you looked at the stats, we'd be well. I'll tell you, we're behind West Brom. We're the best footballing team in the division in terms of passing. It's successful passes, uh, and that's how I like to play, and I'll continue to try and do that. Ponzi making all the running here. Oh, it's a dangerous one. Oh, and he's turned it! Ferenczi got the telling touch and Barnsley take the lead. Keogh trying to make his presence felt here. Henry's header, it's Elliot moving in and the penalty has been awarded. Well, a real lifeline here for Wolves. Within three minutes of falling behind, and it looks as though Andy Keogh is going to take the responsibility here to try and level things up. So it's Keogh against Muller. And Muller saves, and another opportunity wasted. Chris McCann, look at his face, drilled run, making Hennessy make the save and make the mistake. A moment after heroics, a moment to forget for Wayne Hennessy, and Burnley lead at Molyneux. That's oh, the old commentator's curse, isn't it? How unfortunate for him. Just made the most incredible save, and he won't want to see this again. It's routine, isn't it? It's straight at him. Absolutely just slips through his grasp. And it's really bad. Here's your view from behind the goal. It's just everything that you don't. Never quite got his chest behind the ball. And that's a gift for Owen Coyle. Elliot, this is Ward, not a bad ball, dealt with well by Carlisle, it's going to come again here, Ward, brilliant cross, and a fantastic goal, Darren Gibson levels it up, beautifully worked, and they're right back in it. Well, that's a super finish, I'll tell you what, Ward does well here because he gets the ball there, and he tries to drill it across, he gets a second opportunity, there's a decent touch, and he smashes it, but that is a fantastically calm finish. I love the way he passes the ball into the net. He doesn't panic, there you go, in step. Fantastic finish by Gibson. Absolutely quality. Karai, wrong-footed, and Wolves are back on level terms, and that's just the response he needed from his boys. Hansworth looks for Elliot again. This time he dances around the challenge of Gray. Ward there to double up. Tricky customer, though, Wade Elliot. What a good ball that is, and what a goal! Kyle Lafferty restores Burnley's lead. Terrific work, though, from Elliott in the build-up. All round, a cracking Burnley goal. Well, Wolves go to sleep at the far post here. I mean, Mickey Gray, there's your first little error. Just dives in, but a lot of work to do for Elliott. Ward gets back, but he still works it. But look at the room afforded at the far post to Lafferty. He's never going to miss from there. It's a good twist and a good ball in from Elliott. And from one wide player, 
get in the box to the other. And Burnley really. They've come here and they've given it a go, and you can't really argue that they don't deserve that. It's a great goal, and there's your reaction. All that with a lift in Yana off the field. He's back on now. Blake. They're queuing up. Carlisle, a deflection and in. Clark Carlisle will claim the goal, but it went in last off Darren Ward. And Burnley have a two-goal cushion to take it to half-time. Well, we spoke at the top about Wolves having the best defence in the league, didn't we? These are three goals, all three of them. Look at Clark Carlisle's position. Ward's got him there, but then he drifts in because Olaf and Yana loses the man in the middle. And they get lucky, Burnley. Carlisle on the header gets the deflection, a very important deflection. There it is. Then gets his arm, but that's what takes it past Hennessy and into that net. And it's a long haul from here for Wolves. Bothroy towards the far post to Lifignana. And he has given the penalty kick. Some sharp pulling in there, spotted by the referee Steve Tanner. And Wolves have a way back into the game. Well, who is it that grabs a hold of him as he gets around the back? It's Andy Gray. He's got a fistful of shirt. You just can't get away with that. I mean, Olofinjana probably should have scored, but look where the ref is. He's looking right down. It sees the gold shirt. And he's got no option. He's got to give a penalty, and he has done. Eagle eyes from the referee and the right decision as well. Well, they have their path back into the match, but they still need to take it. Well, they missed one at Barnsley the other evening. Andy Keogh took that this time. He is on the bench, and it'll fall to Stephen Elliott. Wolves are blasted back into the match. That's a massive goal. It's very, very calm as well. He lifts the ball off the ground and high into the net, knowing the goal is going to die. Very, very good penalty. So most of the Wolves strikers here is Blackstock. Rollins! What a save from Hennessy! And there's going to be a free kick to Leicester. Michael Gray has just to have brought down Chambers there. And it's going to be Ian Hume to strike this. Oh, what a fine goal that is! A wonderful strike from Ian Hume, his sixth of the season, his fourth in five games, and Leicester have the lead here. Just four minutes gone. Bent it round the wall beautifully. Time running out for Wolves, can they get back on terms? Andy Keogh now. It's Matt Jarvis! There's the equaliser. His first ever goal for Wolves for Matt Jarvis. Didn't want to come in and get injured and miss the first two and a half months of the season, but had to get over that and get myself back fit and, uh, and try and get in the team from there. How aware were you when you came of the exciting tradition Wolves have with uh, uh, opting for, for the use of two wingers? Well, yeah, I mean, that's one of the reasons that I wanted to come here. Uh, you know, they're using the wingers, so that's perfect for me, and I was just raring to go, wanting to get playing. Here's Wolves ahead of Foley, trying to work their way through. This will fall for Campbell. Oh, it's neat work. Campbell in behind, and Garcia! 
Hull City take the lead thanks to Richard Garcia. Dawson to swing it in this time. Garcia's header. Campbell. 2 0. Commanding lead now for Hull City. Thanks to Fraser Campbell. It's Michael Gray. Well, it's a lovely cross. It's Keo. 1 0 Wolves. Keo got in between Shackle and Kamara. For his third of the season, David Marshall beaten. How about that for a cross from Michael Gray? Picked out Keo really well. And the crowd want them to go forward, they do that now. Flick on from Dublin, it's Curitan. Could be in here, Curitan. Oh, Hennessy couldn't stop it going in. And Norwich are back on level terms. New Jamie Curitan, his eighth goal of the season. He was set up by Dion Dublin. It was still a difficult chance, though. He squeezed it past Wayne Hennessy. The year ended on a disappointing note for Wolves, with just a single win, three draws and two defeats from December, and clearly room for improvement, but the promise of the new year ahead for change. Gary Speed. Good stop from Hennessy. He's experienced and youth there. Speed shot, well kept out by Hennessy. He's looking and Bothroyd's timed his run perfectly. Bothroyd. Defender just got a touch in on him and wasn't able to finish it. A real chance for Wolves. The keeper claiming he was kicked. Doesn't look like it to me. Throw that ball up the line. It was a little bit casual there, Collins. Oh! What he was thinking there, Collins, but uh, comes out to Convray. That is a penalty! And the conference national side have a penalty three minutes before half time because of an alleged handball by Neil Collins. Furious with referee Kevin Friend, it was the cross from Convray. Did that strike the hand? Well, you can be the judge, but this is Scott Rendell with a chance to put the non-league side ahead, which he does. It was a mauling at the hands of Morecambe. Is it to be a catastrophe against non-league Cambridge United? Look at the fans who've made the journey. As things get more and more desperate for Wolves, here's Gray. Push out to Jarvis, got a little bit of the luck with the bounce off Gleeson. It's not a bad cross, evaded everyone, but not Kitely! <laughs> Michael Kitely, with 20 minutes to go, has given Wolves a lifeline in this FA Cup third round. Just when it looked as if there was no way through, a lovely run from Jarvis, he's got a flick off the defender, but an expert angled finish by Kitely puts Wolves level. The unthinkable replay, which Kitely has certainly got other ideas about. Everybody pushed up for this one, including Collins! Neil Collins, the defender, who often comes up with late winners, like he did against Coventry. And Michael Kitely's expert cross has given Neil Collins the chance to possibly squeeze Wolves through to the fourth round of the FA Cup. After being behind for so long in this game, superb cross by Kitely. Great run from Collins, 2-1.
Morrison's delivery. Oh, it's difficult. Morrison! He really lashed that one home. And Crystal Palace lead at Molyneux. And it falls to Morrison, it'll fall for Scannell! Palace 2 0 up. Less than five minutes into the second half. Speroni's long clearance. Scannell looking to fight for it. Real mismatch. That's Scowcroft, and that's a brilliant goal. Molyneux stunned. 3 0 looks comprehensive, doesn't it? But I don't think it tells the true story. We played really well then. To that in that game, uh, and really came away another game wondering how it had happened. I know Clinton Morrison got a good goal. I mean, it, it kind of summed us up when uh, Scowcroft, that ball drops to him 30 yards out and he absolutely lashes it in the top corner. It, it was almost the point where we think, well, you know, we couldn't do anything about it at all. The January transfer window allowed Mick McCarthy the opportunity to get hold of a couple of players who we've been keeping an eye on since the beginning of the season. David Edwards from Luton Town and Sylvain Ebanks Blake of Plymouth Argyle, two players who would hopefully help Wolves to climb back into a guaranteed playoff place before the end of the season. Struggles already this season. Keo trying to force his way through. It's Edwards. Oh, what a way to mark your debut! The perfect start for David Edwards. Got a real helping hand from Murphy, but he won't care about that. He's off the mark within eight minutes. And this is Ebanks Blake. It's a chance for him and a goal for him. The perfect time to stretch the lead. That'll be three points now. Superbly finished by Ebanks Blake. I was um, disappointed to leave Luton in the situation I did, but obviously um, their bad their bad luck was my my gain because to come to a club like Wolves was massive for me and say we hadn't won in eight or nine or something and the first game I played we desperately needed to win and luckily we got it and it was great to score on my debut. I think our lack of goals has been a real problem. If you look at the league, the stats, uh, Dave Edwards certainly started with a bang and scored and Sylvan Ebanks Blake was a, uh, he's been terrific since coming here and of course scored that day as well. Uh, it's, it made a big difference to us, just getting the goals. Well, he's the talk of the championship this season, Wayne Hennessy. Everyone's pick as the goalkeeper in the, the league. And in his Keo from the long clearance. Check your watches. I make that less than five minutes. And Wolves have made an absolutely stunning start to this game. Vicarage Road, look at that finish from Keo. Still owe Watford for that defeat in the first day of the season. Well, here's something for Jarvis to chase, and here's something for Elliot to finish. And it's a second for Wolves, and it's been coming. Wonderfully engineered, nicely set up. And look at this clinical finish from Stephen Elliott. Just proving too tough to handle for this side who don't look like anything like the side at the top of the table. Here's Darren Potter. Into Jarvis again. It's a tap in for Jay Bothroyd and three for Wolves. 
Here comes round five of the FA Cup. Looks so easy. Potter's lovely ball. Jarvis unselfishly set up for Freud. Camber let this ball drop as he goes to the byline. It's not a bad cross. Bulls haven't yet got this away. It's John O'Toole. He's got one back for Watford. 20 minutes to play. Maybe too late. Potter. That's right. What a lovely ball to Keogh. What a lovely ball to Keogh. What a great finish to put Wolves into round five in injury time. It's 4-1, a clinical display. Auguring well for Mick McCarthy's team. Firm header out of defence to Keo. What a season this young man has had. On the ball, always dangerous. Plays into a Banks Blake. Great return ball, Keo. 11 minutes on the clock, and Wolves are ahead. Andy Keo set it up. It Banks Blake, the return pass in his second game at Molyneux. Look at that. And a lovely finish. Wolves have the lead. That they have been problems in defence where the concentration is going. There we got one there. And Marcus Tugai has put Wednesday level. Wolves just held the lead for eight minutes in the rain. Sloppy defending. Gray. That's not a bad looking cross. Bothroyd taps it across and it makes a break. In the final minute. Has given Wolves three points. And he's given the groundsman a headache. Finishing the corner flag like this. It's his second home game, his first goal at Molyneux. Second for Wolves. 2-1 Wolves. Again, the Wanderers' shaky home form started the month badly. But the away win at Scunthorpe, followed by a completed double over Sheffield Wednesday, meant they could again focus on success as they faced the challenges February would offer them. switches off, covers by himself. What is the fullback doing at the far post? He's just standing watching, he's just behind cover there. He's out watching in and he just loses cover. Well, look at that, how close is that? Corner-wise. Sadler with the corner kick. And deflected in as well. Watford are tuning up now. Might have been Tommy Smith, wasn't it, who got the final touch to it, we'll see. Well, it was Ellington who got the first touch. There's the ball in. Look at Ellington, he comes from the edge of the box, gets the touch, as a leg comes out, is it Edwards? It's great movement by Ellington, gets the touch, and that is off. Smith, I think it was. It's Tommy Smith, but it's a yeah, movement it from the edge of the box that causes all the problems. There, the leg sticks out. Edwards, 
Oh, it's under hit. It's Sadibi's round Hennessy. Delap's waiting for it. 1 0 Stoke. The easiest of tests in the end for Rory Delap. The mistake from Rob Edwards punished. He's got it back again here. Lindsay in the middle for him to aim at for Wolves. He can't get a clear spot to Edwards! Edwards redeemed himself for his earlier error, his first goal in three and a half years at Wolves. Stoke just couldn't get it clear. Free kick, it's knocked down by Kyle. It's Keo. His seventh of the season puts Wolves in front here. Great knockdown by Kevin Kyle. And Keo sees on it. Stoke still trying to get back on level terms here. Oh, it's broken to Liam Lawrence. He's deadly from this sort of range. And so it's proved. Liam Lawrence with an unerring finish to make it 2-2 here at Molyneux. Fed by Glenn Whelan. Corner from Lawrence. That might break the court. Hennessy couldn't get there. And Stoke lead at Molyneux. What a game. Kick from Gray. Still, maybe a chance here for Wards. Oh, it looked like there was a penalty claim there. Salaf Dia with the tackle. Long Rob, Rob Edwards, but now maybe Stoke can counter. They could finish it here with Ricardo Fuller twisting and turning, weaving his way through. 4 2 Stoke in the 90th minute, and surely now it's all over. Moments after Wolves had a penalty appeal turned down. Stoke breaking from one end of the field to the other at breakneck speed. It's Gary Taylor Fletcher here for Blackpool. Oh, it's a fine save from Hennessy. Onto the crossbar from Gary Taylor Fletcher. So then he backs Blake off the woodwork. Still, we can't break the deadlock. Cardiff City looking to get to the quarter-final stage for the first time since 1927. They went on to win the competition that year, beating Arsenal. Here's the first touch for Tony Capaldi. Paul Parry against Green. Parry, Cardiff City's top scorer, gets there first. And a chance for Andy Keogh to break. Up front with him, Kevin Kyle, who's on loan from Coventry City. But easily dispossessed, and young Aaron Ramsey, goal scorer, plays the ball through. An excellent chance here for Cardiff City to take the lead. And Peter Nottingham strokes the ball past Wayne Hennessy. One through ball, that was all it took. And Ninian Park erupts and celebrates an early goal within 90 seconds. It was a lovely touch from Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. And Peter Whittingham, time and space to stroke the ball calmly past Wayne Hennessy. Great start for Cardiff City. It's Cardiff City 1, Wolverhampton Wanderers 0. Dispossessed by Whittingham. Cardiff City looked to break here. Floyd Hasselbank didn't see Paul Paddy, sees him now. Forces him wide, though. Adam Ramsey making up a lot of ground into the penalty area. Mike Fall here for Whittingham. Whittingham, Hasselbank, Hasselbank for 2 0. What a goal! What a stunning goal from Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. It just gets better and better for Cardiff City with just 10 minutes played. Wayne Hennessy, the Welshman beaten twice already in the Welsh capital. Wolves enjoyed so much possession but then they were caught out by the counter-attack, intelligent play by Whittingham. But what 
a sidestep there from Jimmy Floyd Hasselbank. What a dummy. Left-footed, nothing Wayne Hennessy could do. It's a truly spectacular goal, and Cardiff City lead by two goals to nil. Sean Derry trying to battle to win possession, but he's lost out, and Wolves can steal a march here. This is Gray. And open up for the shot from Gray. Oh! What a stunning finish! Brilliant goal! Now, on his left foot, he can be dangerous, and my word, he was dangerous! Gray's left foot. John Derrick, this is Watson. And is hoping to restore a bit of order and composure to proceedings here. And that's rather agricultural, but it's an opportunity and a glorious strike. Kevin Kyle with a wonderful goal. We've seen some special strikes today, all right. February was a tough month with three defeats out of five and exit from the cup after an entertaining run. But Mick McCarthy's men had hauled themselves back into playoff contention with two late goals in their brilliant win at Selhurst Park. It's been a half of few chances so far at Leia Road. Adam Virgo underneath that. Oh, he's let he backs Blake in. It's 1 0 Wolves. Sylvain E Banks Blake with his 16th of the season. The mistake by Virgo. Punished by E Banks Blake. Really well taken finish in the end, though, from Wolves. In form front there. I think if you look at the league, you'll find a lot of the teams have really done well away from home and not done so well at home. And that's, I, I do think it's expectancy. It's, uh, you know, when we went to play at Charlton and we beat them, Alan Pardew had watched us against somebody prior to that. And he said, you just played with so much more freedom away from home than you did at home. You know, it used to be that your home was your fortress and that's where you got all your points. For some reason, this season, it's been quite the opposite. If you look at Watford results, they've they've not taken as many points. Some stat that was thrown up, they've not taken as many points at home as uh, Sheffield Wednesday, I think it was, and not scored as many not scored as many goals at home as Colchester have. Now, how does that work out? You know, so it, it's it's been tough for all of us this season for some reason, and I don't know why. Now gone here at Molyneux, and still we don't have the breakthrough. Always passing it around confidently, that. He banks Blake, and he's got in between the defenders, lovely skill, brilliant finish. Wolves lead. Sylvain Ebanks Blake with his 17th goal of the season. Beating Southampton, substitute keeper Michael Polk. He just can't stop scoring this man. Southampton trying to find a way back into this. They really need the points tonight to help with their fight against relegation. Be something on for them here, though. Hint of a foul, and the referee's given a penalty. The substitute, David McGoldrick, are judged to have been brought down by Kevin Foley. The Wolves players protest. It's Gregory Vigna against Wayne Hennessy. Just 15 minutes left here. 
Southampton looking to get back on terms. It's Vigna. 1-1. Superbly taken penalty by the Frenchman. And it gave Wayne Hennessy no chance in the Wolves' goal. The clock really is ticking now. Have Wolves got another goal in them? It's Alakovic. He's got it back again here. And he's measured a wonderful cross. Keo with the knockdown. He banks Blake. 2 1 Wolves. Surely, surely now that's all three points in the back. Fantastic cross from Alakovic. The knockdown e equally as good from Kia. knockings of this game now at Molyneux Wolves looking to hold out for a vital three points oh they won't get them Southampton are back on level terms and it's the substitute Jason Yule who's equalised the corner from Mario Nika Hero's highest Jason Yule and it's 2-2 now I like the one against Southampton, even though we drew that game. The first one against Southampton was nice, but um, yeah, I was, I've, I've enjoyed all my goals. But um, more the, the, the ones that win games, I think, are the more the more important ones because I, I, I love to win. So um, they're probably some of my best goals: Sheffield Wednesday and, and a couple of others. So. On ball by Breen, touchdown by Ebanks Blake. Here's Andy Kia. Still Andy Keogh, it's a fantastic run, it's a wonderful goal. Andy Keogh, only on at half-time. Seven minutes after his introduction, he puts Wolves in the lead here at Deep Dirt. Really good finish. Preston looking dangerous here. Brown trying to work his way through. Appeals for a penalty and it's been given by the referee. Jonathan Moss, very quick indeed to point to the spot. And the Wolves players protest, but it's going to fall on deaf ears. Callum Davidson against Wayne Hennessy. It's thumped out by Davidson. Preston back on level terms here at Deepdale. Callum Davidson's third goal of the season. After a hotly disputed penalty. Sedgwick now for Preston. Just nine minutes remaining here. This is Jones. Simon Whaley being given time and space. Oh, and he used it to great effect. A fine goal from Simon Whaley. He could just have won all three points for his side here. Great turn and finish. Henry back here to Foley. Good strong challenge again from James O'Connor. But Henry under pressure from Lafferty this time goes back to Foley. Ball forward, finds that he banks Blake. Orlis and Yarn, a good run through the middle. Can he be stopped? He's a real chance, the big man. And he scored. Back in the side. He's got it past Karai. 14 minutes played. And it's the Nigerian. So here, George Orlis and Yarn, that's got the goal. Got a fantastic record here, Wolves. It's almost like a second home to them. Time for Carlisle here. Oh, he's, he's on the hit, that. Okay, Karai let to do his 2 0. It's good off Michael Gray. Sloppy back pass. Karai hit it against Gray. It's a fortunate goal, perhaps, but it's a second for Wolves. Two in three minutes. And Burnley are really up against it here. Clark Carlisle's been fantastic for Burnley, but that was a sloppy back pass. Yeah, Alexander with the ball in. Header one. Can Laffy to take this down? It bounces away from him, unfortunately. He backs Blake, took it down neatly. It's a nice turn. He's got pace, this lad. Cambridge board, starts at Manchester United, has carried it quite away. Helps it on here to Keo. Keo with Harley with him. Back team backs Blake. Chat three backs Blake. That's gone through Karai. Oh, it's 3-0. Goes down as a keep in Howler. 
Great shot from Evans Blake, escaped the grasp of Karai. And that's 3 0, and surely that's game over. Skill from uh, James O'Connor. Header on Akimbae, it's saved. It's bounces in. Akimbae with the touch. It was a hint of offside with the first header, but it was saved by Hennessy. Last home. Carl, how big a thrill has it been to captain the club that's in your blood and very much that of your family? It's been uh, fantastic. It's been a great, you know, a great honour. Um, I've said many times now, it's uh, you know a dream come true. So uh, for, you know, for me to be playing for my hometown club and having captained them as well um, and, and scored a couple of goals, it's been uh, yeah, it's been fantastic. Are you surprised the honour has come to you so young? Um, I, I was, yeah, yeah, definitely. I think. Um, you know, I'm 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 only 25. I I still see myself as a young player. But um, when the gaffer first gave me the armband, you know, he didn't need to ask me twice. I uh, sort of grabbed it and uh, hopefully took my chance. Seems a good relationship between, between yourself and the gaffer. I can see it's a mutual thing. Um, what is it about his style that appeals to you? Um, since I've been at the club, since the gaffer brought me to the club, he's uh, been very, you know, he's, a, he's very straightforward. He's, um, you know, black is black, white is white, and. If you're rubbish, he tells you, and uh, if you if you're not, he tells you. Uh, you know, I respect him um, as a coach. I like I like the way he coaches. Um, I like the way he wants to to play football and and the way where he wants to go with his team. Um, and you know, you can't ask any more of a manager. It's Grant McCann to take the corner kick here for Scunthorpe. Dangerous delivery. Oh, it's a fine header out from Andy Butler, the centre half, an unlikely scorer, only his second of the season. back on terms here. It's a fine cross in there. He's going to fall to Michael Gray. Deflected it in. His second goal in as many games. And Michael Gray gets Wolves back on terms here at Molyneux. Scunthorpe failed to clear their lines properly. And it took a wicked deflection. Final ten minutes here at Molyneux. And again, Scunthorpe defending in numbers. Wolves still pushing and probing here. And they find a way through. It's Matt Jarvis to measure up across. Oh, it's there! It's Neil Collins. And Wolves lead with just seven minutes remaining here at Molyneux. A fine header home from a pinpoint cross by Matt Jarvis. Brilliantly taken. And that could prove to be a crucial three points. Well, it made the better start, really. That cost Buzaki. Oh, what a strike that is! Just about half an hour gone, and Queen's Park Rangers, not undeservedly, have taken the lead at Molyneux. Struggling again, they seem to get the ball out of their own half. Max Blake has been making himself a nuisance everywhere, and Gray looking to hit the left-footed cross, and he's done it, and Keogh has done it! On the stroke of half-time, Andy Keogh will send Wolves in level. What a great cross from Gray, but a super finish. Cross from Pizarki again, the goal scorer. And referee Clive Oliver has seen a handball there. But it seemed very, very harsh. Well, Dexter Blackstock, he became a father yesterday and today. He may be scoring. So it's a goal. And fatherhood in the space of 24 hours for Dexter Blackstock and QPR regain the lead. Desperate problems in the defence. Chased by Jarvis, he's bundled over there, and it's another penalty. Looked outside the area for me, but the Wolves fans won't complain. It banks Blake to make it 2-2. Straight down the middle. It was all that was needed. 
and Wolves back in this seesaw game again. Oh, Keogh got done. Something that normally he is doing. The Rangers looking for a third. They're not unlikely to get it either. Wolves just can't get the ball out. What a shot! Litchett Wood came from nowhere and smacked that one. Right past Tennessee. He had no chance. QPR 3-2 in the lead again. Astonishing. Looking surely not for a fourth. You see other teams come here like Stoke and hit balls on the counter. Keo. The dainty backflip. Keo again. Anyone can create something. It's Andy Keo. It banks Blake. Great stop from the keeper camp. It's off the post. And Ben can't get it. Just trying to get it through the eastward. It's Andy Keogh. Deep in injury time and Wolves have got a deserved equaliser in this fantastic game. It's Wolves 3, QPR 3. Got into double figures. A uh, uh, couple of assists along the way and... Uh, you know, um, uh, I went through a, a bad patch for a while, but um, you know, I just, I just got my head down and just, you know, tried to get myself out of that patch and, you know, come good with a few goals. Henry playing it forward. Good ball back for Keo. Evans Blake waving in the middle. They linked up well. Look at Jarvis in space. Evans Blake. He's put it away. The birthday boy with a goal. 22 today. And he makes it six goals in his last seven matches to give Wolves the lead here, crucially. Look at Keogh's movement off the shoulder, just half a yard, stays onside, early ball in, could have been one of the two there, put it in. But Ebanks Blake takes responsibility, and it's this run, the timing of it, the early ball, good first touch, takes it so early, and that is a quality finish from a very, very confident goal scorer. That's the combination between Keogh and Ebanks Blake. Fantastic start from him here at the Valley. Holland went in for the header, couldn't quite get enough on it. It's come out here to Jerome Thomas. Nicely done, half and he's equalised. That's exactly what John wanted. Two goals in two games for the right back. Very, very well taken indeed. Well, it came from the moment of inspiration, didn't it, to start with? That was the corner. Ambrose got the free kick. He does well here, just gets past Gray, one touch. And look at the comfortable finish there. What a confident finish this is. Changed both their wide men in the second half. Gray and Jarvis both off. There's not much of a look in the second half for Ebanks Blake so far, but he might be on a great something here. Oh! You have just seen one of the goals of the season in the championship from Sylvan Evans Blake. How did he do that? Quite magnificent. You can use any superlative you like for this. He looks second favourite here. It's in the channel. You think, well, we'll just close him down here. Just usher into safety and look at this for ability. Total confidence, one touch, bang! What a finish that is. Defender again, the right side, but it's just the ability that beats him. Sheer class and the power of the finish, just unstoppable. That's the moment, class personified, and not a chance for Weaver. Look at the look on his face there, Mick McCarthy. He can't believe it. Him as a centre-half, don't think he'd have stopped him either. Fantastic goal. That is simply glorious. Surely we'll get this in here. I can't believe they're not doing it here. I just cannot believe it now they're in the crowd. Sajay's doing it, he's gone a long way, and yes, Leroy Lita with a splendid header to save it for Charlton. He'll get a booking for taking off his shirt, but you know what, he is not going to care. It's his first goal for Charlton, look what it means to him. Charlton Athletics save it like this. Well, you wonder why it wasn't going in the first place, he lays it back and then he thinks, right, Sajay just puts it in there, and you think, well... Iwalumu could do this, but Leroy Lita, what a fantastic header this is. Generates the power from near the penalty spot. He's a long ball in the box, but that's what's been 
causing the trouble. He attacks it superbly, and no keeper saves that. Heads it down, back where it came from. Classic Heller. Kyle's got some chasing to do. Henry's arriving in the middle. Can he do it this time? Yes, he can. He's won it for Wolves, surely. This time, the skipper, Carl Henry, in what is an incredible finish here at the Valley. Well, speechless, really. Absolutely unbelievable. Terrific break here. Kyle does well. He stays on side. Just on side. He's put him wide here, but look at the run from Henry. He absolutely breaks his neck to get there. He's full stretch, he's seen wide of him. Kyle looks up, sees the run, gets his leg round it, and that's a quality finish again. Kept his concentration, hits the target, and it's again a tremendous finish, and you've got to give Wolves credit. How frustrated were you when they were released to score? Were you, were you annoyed that the players were sitting back a little too much? Yeah, I've just, I've just gone into one in the dressing room and slammed the table and had a kick off, and they're all looking at me I'm only kidding, because <laughs> we've won, but... That lets that's lets them off the hook really because we've won the game. It was uh, oh well, very disappointing. Carl Henry said that the belief is 100% that you, you can make the playoffs and go up this season. Um, do you notice that day in day out at this club? Yeah, I do. That, you know, when you're winning games, it's easy to say it, and it's, it's then it, it rolls off the tongue easily. When we were having that tough spell earlier on in the season, and I kept saying it, I don't think anybody believed me. Perhaps after watching that, a few more might. And Sylvain Ebanks Blake, seven in seven, eight in fourteen since he joined you. Did you expect this sort of impact this quickly? Oh, absolutely. Did I? I expected him to play well and score goals, but that second one's as good as you'll see. Wonderful. I'm delighted. I'm uh, just delighted with the win. It's a long time um, coming, and we deserved it. Where does that second goal rank in all of the goals you've scored in your career? Oh, it's a, it's a good goal. It's up there, and uh, delighted with it. But I'm um, just delighted with the win. We um, persevered to, right to the final whistle, and um, and we got our rewards. Carl, you've got your destiny in your own hands with the teams that you face now in the run-in. Is there belief here that you can make it to the playoffs and go up? Uh, 100%. You know, we believe, we've always believed all season. Um, results haven't always gone, you know, our way, but uh, we, we're plugging along. We're going to keep going, take each game as it comes. And, uh, you know, like you say, it's in our own hands now. March saw four wins, two draws and a single defeat to thrust Mick McCarthy's men back into a position where the invaluable playoff place was once again in their own hands. April was clearly going to be the month that put Wolves' fate firmly in the slot. Ebanks Blake got a touch. And maybe some problems here. Ebanks Blake harrying well and that's Gray coming in. Second bite, good save by Basso. And Bristol City with problems there. And that's neatly turned on by Keo now for Gray. And could still be a dangerous ball in, it's Jarvis with the chance, and another fine save by Adriano Basso. With some confidence now. Kevin Phillips has got away from the defence. And he's round Craddock. Gear up. It's the goal West Brom have been looking for. And it puts them ahead at Molina. Disaster for Wolves. Being urged on for what would be a vital victory and much needed. It's Ebanks break! What a crucial goal it could be for Sylvan Ebanks Blake and Wolves lead with 18 minutes left. And that was a rather unceremonious challenge there on Alan Lee. Will be Miller to hit and Miller to score. Superb free kick. And right at the death, Ipswich have stolen a point here. Early free kick for Walls. Andy Keogh. His name's been 
called by the fans. Fences his chances early on. Into the wall. Michael Quitely will push it in again. Bob Edwards with the header. And there it is from Keogh. He started the move with the free kick. And what a header from Wolves number nine. Well, it was well worked in the end. An intelligent play from Michael Kitely. He found Edwards, but look at that header from Keogh. Now Wolves coming away with a lot of support. Jarvis's cross. Sylvana Banks Blake didn't get any power in the header. Another chance here. Keo. He's done it now. Sylvana Banks Blake. Yet another goal for Wolves. And this one just before half time. And the poor old groundsman looks in vain at his corner flag as Wolves hit two. Stuck in there. Keo into the right foot. Kitely just couldn't get anyone in there. He makes play. He's hit it. Michael Kitely's on the rebound. Just 10 minutes into the second half, and Wolves have three over the FA Cup finalists. The playoff places beckon now. The more goals, the better the goal difference. What a striker's goal there from Kitely. 3 0 Wolves. You now I've been out four months, and you know uh, the season's you know finished too soon for me. Um, obviously, I'll, I'll be in most of the summer. Um, you know, trying to get back fit, fully fit for uh, for next season. How frustrating has it been for you along the way? Oh, it's been a nightmare. Um, you know. It's, Sitting up in the stands every game, you know, you, you seem to think that you're the best player in the world. Um, but you know, I'm trying to kick it every ball, head every ball. Um, it's just a nightmare. Um, but you know, gladly I'm I'm back now. You had a good partnership here with Michael McIndoe. Um Good signs with yourself and Matt Jarvis being a, a good wing partnership for Wolves. How much does that excite you for the future? Yeah, you know, um, Jarvo is a good player. Um, he's a bit different from McIndoe. You know, Jarvo's uh, got a lot more pace. Um, and you know, hopefully, I can um, have a few games with him to, like now for, till the end of the season. And you know, hopefully, next year we can uh, we can get flying. Floated in, and Ward has peeled away, and Ward has scored. Well, they were waiting for the flag, Wolves, and it didn't come. And commentary in front after 18 minutes. Kitely looking to get there, and that is going to be a penalty and a chance for Wolves to get back into this and keep their playoff hopes alive. So Ebanks Blake has the pressure on his shoulders and he's up to the task. And Wolves vitally are back on terms at the Rico Arena. Dispatched confidently by Sylvan Ebanks Blake. And it is 1 1. Wolverhampton Wanderers organised their Player of the Year evening at the Plush Ramada Hotel, where fans were given a chance to vote for their goal of the season and see just who'd won the prestigious player awards for 2007 to 8. We were there to capture the excitement and grab the winners for a quick word after receiving their awards from the BBC's Jackie Oakley, who started with a story about being a Wolves fan and covering matches for Radio 5 Live. Um, I was in a slightly tricky situation myself a couple of weeks ago and I got a phone call from work from 5 Live to, um, to tell me which games I was doing, which um, is a regular kind of phone call. But this one was a little bit different because, if you recall, a year ago I said that I'd been sort of banned from doing a few Wolves games after. I'd been outed as a Wolves fan uh, because I've done my match of the day thing. And, um, and so I didn't think I'd be able to do too many Wolves games and I haven't done too many this season. I've seen a few as a fan but not so many uh, as a reporter or commentator. So I was slightly surprised to get a phone call to say that I was going to be commentating on Five Live on Wolves versus West Bromwich Albion. Now, 
when you've been a Wolves fan for as long as I have and you grew up at New Cross, or born in New Cross Hospital and grew up in Codsall and have a Wolves key ring and sleep with a signed Wolves shirt above your bed and uh, can barely talk to your uh, boyfriend's father because, not because he's an Albion fan, but because he used to work in West Bromwich. It's, it's still a sticking point with me then to get that phone call to be told that you actually have to be impartial, impartial in a black country derby at Molyneux and uh, not sound like you knew a little bit too much about the Tesco bags and about the Billy Quiet stand and all those things came out, but I thought that was just a little bit of flavour of, of what you needed from a black country derby. But I was told it was, it was kind of fairly obvious that... Um, which side my bread was buttered, but I did try, but unfortunately couldn't influence the result, but, uh, but never mind. Anyway, on to this evening's awards. Now, the next award tonight is the Birmingham Midshires Young Professional of the Season Award. Now, to present the award, you please welcome to the stage Mr. Aaron Fielder from Birmingham Midshires. <laughs> if you'd like to announce the winner of the Birmingham Midshires Young Professional of the Season Award. And the winner is Elliot Bennett. Elliot, congratulations. How does it feel to be uh, honoured so young? Well, you know, it's a brilliant feeling. You know, you can't explain how you feel when you win an award. You know, obviously you're doing something right. But you know, at the beginning of the season when I started out, I didn't think I'd win anything like this. I just trained and you know, fucking, you know, do my best. And good times, of course, for the family with your brother doing so well as well. Well, yeah, you know, he's doing well, and like I always knew he'd do well. But you know, we just. You know, we, we all love football. It's a football-loving family, and we just do the best we can. You know, all the time. Dare I ask what you think 2008, 2009 might hold for you? Well, you know, hopefully a couple more appearances in the Wolves first team, because that's, you know, that's my ultimate aim. That's what I want to do, and hopefully it can be in the Premiership next season. But you know, I just, you know, I just do my best, and if that's good enough, then brilliant. Next up for an award was Sylvani Banks Blake for the striker of the season and Andy Keogh just behind a second top goal scorer for the club. Sylvan, it's been uh, quite a few months. Congratulations on the award. Thank you. Uh, it's been brilliant and um, let's, let's hope uh, you know, me and Keogh can continue scoring the goals on Sunday and, and take us into the playoffs and, and up to the Premiership. So, yeah, thank you. You've settled in uh, double quick time and, of course, you've come up with the most important currency in the game, uh, yeah. goals. Yeah, it's, it's, it's um, the players and, and the staff, like I said, is, have made it easy for me to, to come here in January and, um, and and just pick up where I left off down, down in Plymouth. So um, it, it's been really good. It's a strange one, of course, with ending the season at home to the club you only left in January, Plymouth. Yeah, it will be, but um, it's just another game to me in my eyes and, um, and a game that we need to win, so that's what we'll, what we'll be doing. Andy, you've come with a late rush to push uh, Sylvan very close to this award. No, I think he's come with the rush. <laughs> <laughs> he, uh, no, yeah, you know, since I've been playing with him, and I feel I've been, you know, getting more chances. It's been going well, and uh, you know, it, it don't matter to me who who, uh, who gets it as long as we win. You know, I'm happy uh, at the moment as it is. But it feels good that uh, it appears that there's more goals in the team. Oh yeah, there's it, definitely after quite a dry spell in mid-season. Yeah, definitely. You know. Um, Feel we're always going to get a chance, and you know, uh, working uh, working together, we uh, we get twice as many. So no, it's it's going well. And you feel that the partnership works well, as well as the two of you being good players in your own right. Yeah, I, I think the team works well. You know, partnership don't work well without the team. So, you know, we just you know keep doing what we do, and the lads keep doing what they do. Uh, it will be okay. Next up was Sylvana Banks Blake again. This time for that goal of the season. Back into the second half of e Banks Blake so far, but he might be able to create something here. Oh my goodness me, you have just seen one of the goals of the season in the championship from Sylvan e Banks Blake. How did he do that? Sylvan, it was a wonderful goal, wonderful strike. Just uh, tell us your memories of it if you would. Well, I just um, Foles sort of knocked it up the line and uh, I've chased down a lost cause and um, sort of after that it was, it was really an instinctive thing. I didn't necessarily think about it. I think it's just one of them split second things, you either do it or you don't and luckily for me I sort of did it, it came off and then I scored a goal and uh, delighted. Best goal of the season but do you regard it as the best goal of your career? Yeah, so far definitely and um, 
really pleased to score, but more importantly to win that game, which made it even even better. And it was my birthday as well, which was brilliant. So it was just um, a great day all round for me personally and the team. Finally, the most important and prestigious award, the Wolves Player of the Season for 2007-8. And it was, for the second year running, a goalkeeper. This time, Wayne Hennessy. Wayne, it's been quite a night for you. Congratulations. Cheers, thank you very much. Um, it's absolutely over the moon. Um, I'd say to win the two as well, it's just fantastic. But I'd say it's just a perfect night for me. If I could just take you back 12 months in your wildest dreams before you had uh, made your Wolves debut, could you possibly have dreamt that this would be in store 12 months down the line? Definitely not. Um, as I say, nobody would have predicted this. As I say, um, at the time I was at Stockport, then came back. Obviously, it was an injury blow for Matt Murray, and I stepped in. But as I say, it's just been perfect for me this season. Um, hopefully, I can have a good next season as well. You're a very calm lad, no nerves, but were you just a bit nervous walking up on that stage to get the awards? Um, yeah, I was, well, I was more nervous doing the speech, actually. Um, I'd say I'm not the best of speeches, but uh, going up collecting the award, I was fine. And... So you mean we have found a weak point? There are some nerves in there. Yeah, there is a weak point in me, yeah, actually doing speeches. So I put my hands up to that and say, yeah, I'm very poor at that. Sunday is the easy bit. Back to the day job on Sunday. Yeah, as I say, clean sheet for me, I'll be over the moon. Just before the awards, we caught up with the new club owner and chairman, Steve Morgan, for his thoughts about the season as a whole. It's been fantastic. It's been a, um, just great to be involved with the club. It's, uh, uh, the ups have been fantastic, the downs have been depressing, but uh, it's been a roller coaster ride. I've thoroughly enjoyed it. Um, it would have been nice if we'd had a few more points, and, um, but we here we are few days before the final game of the season and we're still in with a shout of the playoffs so uh, hopefully it'll be um, a happy ending. So whatever happens um, on Sunday we've obviously got a very young and talented squad uh, what are your views on the future Steve? Yeah that's the, 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 for me the, the thing that's come out of this season most of all is some of the young players who were both at the club before I came and who we've managed to bring in I, I just think we've got the most fantastic young squad going forward and um, I think next season, I, I just can't wait to get into it, whichever division we're in. I, uh, I just think we've got uh, the real nucleus of a great side. And finally, Steve, massive day on Sunday. Uh, do you have a message for the supporters? Uh, my message for the fans is get behind the lads. Give them, they're going to do the best for you and you do your best for them. But please, just get behind the lads. I know you will anyway, but get behind the lads and really give them a send-off. Final league game of the season. Fingers crossed for what happens elsewhere and you never know, we, 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 we may still uh, make it through to the playoff final and, and make it through the Premiership. Wolverhampton Wanderers with a single game left in another desperately exciting season were again heading to the wire. If they could beat Plymouth Argyle at Molyneux by two goals and Watford failed to beat Blackpool, then they'd be lining up for a playoff place for the second year running. Could Mick McCarthy's men do it? Well, we're, we're, we're at the playoff stage, but we're, it's not in our hands this year like it was last. And we had to go to Leicester and win what we did. Uh, we've got to win this game against Plymouth, but then rely on others. Uh, a bit of a mixed bag. We've, we've, uh, we've delighted people and frustrated people. And, I think it's our inconsistency that's left us at the, this position where, you know, had we... I don't believe in looking back, especially now at this moment. I've been asked the question today, you know, what ifs? If you start doing that, you become very negative. You never move forward. But I guess if we looked at it, sat having a beer on a beach in the summer when I'm on holiday, we've had missed opportunities. I can't honestly say, and we were at the club dinner last night and I said to the guys on the table I asked them I said can you tell me how many times you've come away from the game and thought we were lucky today poor we didn't have to have it off today you know we were fortunate I didn't get too many answers and I gave them one I said Blackpool at home oh they thought they murdered us and they missed a chance to make it 2-0 and of course we consequently won the game 2-1 uh, I can't remember any others I really can't so I don't think we've had our I'm not going to say we're unlucky, but we've not had that slice of luck. You know, we've had penalties and against us and sometimes not given. 
And yet, I, I just admire the lads so much because they really worked hard, put the shift in and just kept going. And it looked for a while where we were going to miss out completely. We may still do, but you never know. We're still in it on the last day. The Wolves needing something urgently. Eastwood, that's a good ball. It's Olaf Injana who'll get there. Olaf Injana! What a massive goal that could be for Wolves. The playoff dream is still just about alive here. Well, there's not much time, but it could be a crucial goal. Well, the news from elsewhere is not good for Mick McCarthy. Watford have held on at Bloomfield Road, and it means that it's the Hornets who will go into the playoffs. Wolves miss out. And the heartbreaking margin of a single goal. Another solid season for Wolverhampton Wanderers, but six points short of last year's total, the playoff place had proved elusive through simple goal difference over Watford. The team who'd won at Molyneux with two very late goals on the very first day of the season. Nevertheless, with Mick McCarthy at the helm, the Black Country Giants of Wolves could expect another season of thrills and spills. And who knows, maybe a promotion place at the end of it this time. What you see with me is what you get. And I, I, I do my job. I come in here, I skip in here every morning. I love coming in, I enjoy it. And, and every one of us in the football club, from myself up or down, works our socks off to make it a, a successful club. And I think to make it a nice environment that everybody wants to come and work and train in. I would say trust in the players and the team and uh, we've got good young players and, and support them and back them and I think they'll, they'll bear fruit, this team, they're good players.